It was my senior year. I was 16 years old. An assignment was due in my English class that I had two months to work on. I read over the prompt, what does it mean to be an American? Blah, blah, rhetorical devices and stylistic choices, blah, blah, language, creativity, and effort. I tell myself, what am I going to write? I avoided the assignment because it was hard for me to answer. I was staring at my screen as if my assignment was going to type itself. I was stressed because it was now due in a short amount of time. I always have poor time management with doing homework, and most importantly, I'm stressed on the fact that I haven't typed not even a single letter, much less a word. I have to come up with the answer. I have to gather millions of people into a sentence. Perhaps I just thought too much of it. I could have easily said a hardworking person, right? But what about those fellow Americans who aren't hardworking? Are they not considered American? What do I say? I could start my assignment with my dad was deported to Mexico when I was seven. Or when I was 14, I detained my stepdad and put him in a deten detention facility to deport him. This is also when I found out I am the daughter of three illegal immigrants. But my mom, even though she is undocumented, she is untouchable. She's Superman, and there's no kryptonite in this world. This is my life as an American. I could also write, just months before this assignment, my aunt woke me up to my worst nightmare. Gnarly, gnarly, immigration is questioning your mom. In a matter of seconds, I'm outside in my, Chiva, in my Stay in Chivas shirt, my PJs with my little snowflakes, my hair up and messy from just being woken up min a minute ago. I'm outside my, heart, my house, I took out my phone, I started recording because that's my First Amendment right and I know my rights. This officer was questioning my mom if she was Rocio Reynada. I said, it's our Fifth Amendment right to not speak. He kept asking questions, we stay silent. I told my mom to enter the house. Next thing you know, my mom's speaking to lawyers and at the same time telling me, no te preocupes, Narly. Ya sabes que todo está en tu nombre y tengo dinero guardado. When she said this, I was in shock. Even though I've always prepared for this moment, moments like this, I wished for a different life. I wish I was like, um, I wish I was like, every other American teenager who's in their last year of high school worried about what prom dress to wear instead of whether or not my mom will be coming home at the end of the day and I'll be in charge of my nine-year-old brother, Eric. This is my life as an American. I was born and raised Children Hospital in San Diego, California. I speak more English than Spanish. I grew up to Clifford the Big Red Dog and also to Chavo El Ocho and even Dora. When filling in paperwork, I checked the US option, US citizen option. But a big but, an enormous one, that makes this assignment so hard to answer is my amazing mommy, mi ama. The My mother is a base foundation of who I am. She is, a, she is a main reason why I can answer this assignment so easily. My mother was born in Acapulco, Mexico. She came to America at the age of 19. My mom was the first of her family to come here, so you know the basics. She didn't know English. She had no support system and left her whole identity in Mexico. Not saying as in she literally left her identity in Mexico, but I mean as in her friends, her home, and her family, and everything. I just turned 19 a few months ago. I, I get nervous to travel to LA without my mom, a two hour drive. I can't imagine the courage she had to come to another country, not knowing their language, their way, and their land, but she had the courage to do so. The second my mom comes into my mind, I start typing the assignment for my class. All these memories, all these emotions, all my experiences hit me because of this damn English assignment. I feel like I'm typing so fast, just words pouring out of me. Another memory hits me. I remember crossing the border for the first time at 10 to go see my biological dad. I never questioned how my dad, who I used to see every night, now became a 30-minute bi-weekly trip. My dad was deported when I was in second grade. I remember asking him when he was coming back. I remember begging him, please be back by third grade because school is so hard and mom doesn't help me with English homework like he, the way he did. My dad knew English so communicating with him was easier. I remember he said, I will mommy. I believed him. He made a promise knowing he was going to break it. Third grade started and he wasn't here. I don't remember being angry or not. Next thing you know, I'm going to this place called Tijuana to go see my dad. I go with my dad because she has a car to go in and out of this Tijuana place. Tijuana's nothing like San Diego. I know I've gone from one side to another because the roads get bumpier and the nasty sewer hit smell hits us. I moved on from the pain of seeing my dad from every night to two weeks a week and pretty quickly. I was seven when he first left, so I was quick to adjust. But I won't lie to you. 
Every year when we had to make Father's Day gifts for our fathers in school hurt me because I knew he would never get the gifts. I eventually started hating that day and would coincidentally be sick every year and miraculously fine the next day. I got used to seeing my dad in Mexico, but what happened to my parents' relationship? Not thinking about it, I never asked my mom why she never took us to go see my dad. At the age of 12, my mom had this friend. <laughs> yep, you guessed it, a little boyfriend. Homie was cool. I mean, what mom's friend would take you to the waterfront park and buy you your favorite food? Yeah, if you were 12, you would think that was a cool-ass friend, too. <laughs> now, fast forward to the age of 14. Now, this is a memory that I wish I never experienced, or no one should have to, in matter of fact. I remember, I remember this day like it was yesterday. My stepdad asked me if I wanted to share his work over to school. I said, no, voy en el trolley. We continue with our morning. Damn, who's that knocking on the door this early? Officers. We couldn't exactly pretend like no one was home, like when there's religious people outside. They were looking for a man. we never seen him before. Showed us a picture, then they left. We didn't think much of it. Hey, Angel, ya está el Uber. He left. We said our casual bye, see you later. I left a minute after him. I was turning around the corner when I saw they stopped the car. Ooh, something's going on. I crossed the street being no nosy. I mean, technically, I wasn't being nosy because I always cross the street, but it just so happened there was a car being stopped there. Hey, that looks like Angel. Hey, that is Angel, and those are the officers who stopped by the house. I ran to him. That's my dad, that's my dad. I grew to love Angel as a father figure, but that was the first time I called him dad. I had no idea what to do. They, paced, they placed him in handcuffs. I was sobbing, and a stern voice they said to back away. I'm thinking, this is illegal. What are they doing? I wanted to hug him as if that's going to make them disappear, but I was frozen. Once again, they asked me to stay back. I said, at least let me take his wallet. They allowed me to get his personal items. He said, it's okay to call your mom. He, he said, it's okay, call your mom. Gone in a flash. I remember calling everyone, aunts, uncles, cousins, every person with a drop of my blood to tell them what happened. I didn't know what happened. School. I hopped on the trolley, crying, and went to school. Eventually, I was told Angel was picked up by ICE. He was in a detention facility for a long time. I turned 15 when he was there. At 15, I gathered the knowledge of border police, illegal immigrants, and of deportation. I've always wanted to be a law, first a detective, then a judge, and I was thinking about being a lawyer, but this solidified it. No way what they did was legal. My desire to be in law still runs strong. I still wish I had my 10-year-old innocence, but I'm 19 now, and I've seen a lot. I know the reason why I crossed the border every other weekend was because my dad was deported forcefully. I've been educated now. I tell my mom, even though she was not born here, she does have rights. I let her know not to feel powerless as many illegal immigrants do. I'm someone my family could depend on. If something were to happen to my mom, she wouldn't have to worry how I'm, about how I'm gonna pay the bills because now I know. My mom has everything organized in case one day she doesn't come home. My brother knows exactly what to happen in case that happens. You see how I'm using present tense? Some people have to plan their lives in case their parents die. I have to plan my life in case the government decides my mom, who's been here for more than 20 years, paid taxes, has a home, and two US citizens' kids, who, one who is only 11 and depends on her, is not American enough. Just because she was not born on the other side of the border, I said, F that. In the national anthem, it says, land of the brave. Was my mom or the many who shared the same story as her not brave enough when she came? They, when she, oh, sorry who share the same story as her not brave enough when she or they left everything to start a life here. What power does the government think they have to tear families apart, give children trauma, and decide those only born on the land are American? BS, those who come here try to give themselves a better life than the ones they were born into. They should have every right to be treated like an American. Americans praise Christopher Columbus, a white man who crossed a who went across oceans to make his life richer. There's a day named after him. I remember learning about, about him in elementary. But yet, when someone with brown skin migrates, they are scrutinized. Some people from Mexico come here to work, to have a richer life for themselves, and more importantly, for their kids. They are scorned upon and told to go back to their land, belittled by mostly everyone and treated less than a person. This is just hypocr hypocrisy. My name alone shows you a part of my identity. 
I am Mexican-American. I have an English slang as my first name and a common Mexican last name. I see how my two identities crash. I have a love-hate relationship with my identity. I've seen my American people come together and demand for change, but I've seen how they look away when they rip families apart. I've seen my raza set me into our community because of my brown skin, but laugh at me when I speak. I spoke how I, spoke how I struggle with life, and my so-called friend who was born and raised in Mexico replies, you don't know what it means to struggle. You are American. It hurt me. I am American stereotype. As if being a brown Chicano woman isn't challenging enough, now I feel judgment from my own community. Then when I speak, my tongue twists upon itself, no way to defend it in the same language as my Mexican friend speaks because I was raised speaking Spanish only at home. Although I could speak it enough, I cannot speak it as, fluent as fluently as English. Yet, I wouldn't choose any other life. I'm able to see the beauty, the beautiful, I'm able to see the beauty of both cultures. I have Bad Bunny to dance my heart out, and I have Taylor Swift to sing my heart out. I eat 12 grades on New Year's because my mom says for luck. I celebrate Mother's Day twice since Americans celebrate on a different day. On September 15, I celebrate Mexico's Independence Day, and on July 4th, I celebrate American Independence Day. We celebrate Dia de los Muertos the whole month of October, where we don't mourn my, where we don't mourn my father, but celebrate the way he lived. We celebrate Thanksgiving not with traditional meals, but with tamales. We go buy overpriced waters with syrup drums while shopping at Target while me and my mom estamos chismeando. <laughs> with all that in mind, I came to the conclusion on how to answer my assignment. What does it mean to be American? I don't know. I hope to change my answer. I know I'm not the only one that has experienced something with immigration. You might think your voice might not be heard, but your voice with mine, with someone you know, that I know, the thousands of daughters of illegal immigrants, the thousands of sons of illegal immigrants, our allies who think like we do, I'm sure will be loud. We could change the definition of what an American is and make the answer to a prompt like mine work for people like us.